guys, Kenneth Burchett here. Wanted to talk to you today about putting your focus on Christ and putting your focus on your potential and not on your limitations. It's so important that in, in order to do and in order to become, that's what you need to behold and be focusing on. So instead of being focused on trying not to sin, and instead of being focused on trying not to make mistakes, it's so much better to be focused on your potential and the good that you can do to give yourself a responsibility to act on something instead of giving yourself a responsibility to tie something down or to get rid of something. Okay. <clears throat> Reason why I bring this up is it, it's unfortunate, but we run into it. You probably have. I have several times where you're gathered with some friends or some people and you're in a prayer circle or what have you, and, uh, you know, things are going well. People are taking time to to edify maybe a service or, or to lift up and to speak life over uh, um, their pastor or whatever. Maybe it's a time of, uh, excuse me, maybe it's a time of intercession for whatever reason, okay? And there will be a good flow. People are, you know, I'll be, you know, just declaring faith in the atmosphere and thanking God for, for his presence and just declaring miracles and healings to take place. And just speaking that the Holy Ghost is going to give people whacked out awesome encounters and just praising him for the things he's going to do and thanking him for what he already has done on the cross and thanking him for the small victories he's already accomplished in our lives. And focusing on this, focusing on thanking him for the angelic realm and thanking him that the angels are our friends and that they're showing up in these services and they're helping minister beside us to, to, to make Jesus famous and to make his glory known. These are good, positive things. And there will be times where that's the focus. And then all of a sudden that one person speaks up and says, God, we just... I sense there's a principality, there's a power, there's a ruler of darkness somewhere in here, and I just, I bind that in Jesus' name. We just, got, we just come against that. We just come against the plans of the enemy. We just, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Let, let's rewind a second. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Show me one scripture where Jesus was going to speak to people, minister to people, or, 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 or any time in his life where he stopped everything, where he took the focus off of his father, and he put the complete focus on what Satan's kingdom was planning to do. When did Jesus attempt to take out with his own prayers, a principality, a power, a ruler of the air, whatever. When did Jesus ever come against Jezebel and say, we cast you down right now, Jezebel? What, when, did, when did he come against these some of these crazy named spirits that you don't even see in the Bible, that the prophetic stream has given so much attention to? When did you see this? No, I could see. If, in the life of Christ, before prayer meetings, he felt it was important to declare revival, and if he felt it was important to cast down Jezebel and every other high ruler of darkness, okay? Um, or if it was, or, but, but you don't see that. You don't see that in the ministry of Christ. You see, the only time Jesus puts a focus on the demonic and, and the kingdom of darkness is when it opposes him, is when he's faced with it, is when it's in front of him. Someone starts manifesting a demon, Jesus casts it out. Someone asks for prayer because a family member of theirs has, has a demon or is struggling with something. Jesus is faithful to go there and remove that thing. Okay? Jesus dealt with the demonic when they showed their face. He did not go looking for it. Jesus never gathered the disciples and said, listen, we're going to go find demons. No, he gave them authority to cast out demons. 
He didn't give them authority to go demon hunting. Okay, this is silly. He never said, listen, I'm giving you a ministry where I want you to try to find every evil spirit possible and do hand-to-hand -hand combat with it. Uh, I want you to use my name and to make it your purpose to go and find where all these demons are, call them out by name, and make sure that they go. He gave them authority over every unclean spirit, every evil spirit within his name so that you could deal with it as he dealt with it. Jesus never asked the disciples to perform something he didn't disciple them to do himself. Uh, he never asked them to, to, to have a ministry that he himself didn't represent and demonstrate. Okay? So, again, I just, I just, my purpose right now is to help make you aware. And maybe to remove some of these lies, some of these these false beliefs that when we gather together to pray, our focus needs to be on the demonic realm and what they may or may not do to our service or to our leaders. Okay, this is silly. This should never be our focus. Now, when you see the manifestation of the demonic, cast it out. Take authority and remove that thing because you have that authority in Christ. It's part of who you are now, all right? When you noticed uh, the effects of an evil spirit, sickness, disease, uh, um, um, strife, dissension, jealousy, envy, different things like that, okay? Speak to that oppression and speak freedom to people, okay? Help remove the strongholds from their mind. But never, never go out of your way to try to engage some potential powerful demonic force, okay? It's, it's not impressing God, and it's not good for you. It really is not good for you to give the demonic any more attention than what is required to get them out of your path. So the next time that you're praying or you're in a prayer circle or there's some people around and, and they start sending up prayers or you're interceding and someone thinks they need to go out of their way to cast Jezebel down and remove her or, you know, come against the spirit of Python or <laughs> there's so many, um, you fill in the blank. The next time you see somebody thinking that they need to come against some high powerful spirit or evil authority over their region and they think they need to yank this thing down and get it in a headlock and beat it with the name of Jesus for a few minutes and then say, go back to hell. Ooh. The next time you see this happening, just know that this was not demonstrated in the ministry of Jesus. And it's important that we always know that Jesus is perfect theology, okay? The life of Jesus is the model for all ministry, for all Christian lifestyle. The Apostle Paul knew this best, and he made sure to display and demonstrate the same life which Christ did. And in fact, the Apostle Paul was the one who was entrusted with the mystery revealed, which is to know that that God has now came and made his home inside of you and lives in you and dwells in you and has made you one with him, okay? So that now you understand that this great power, the same power that was in Jesus, who had no trouble defeating death, hell, and the grave, who had no trouble casting out any demon that stood in his way or eliminating any sickness, okay? That power now indwells your mortal body and that you are not just a mere mortal anymore. You are a body that is composed of flesh and blood, which is vulnerable to some things, but you are supernaturally charged and a new creation in Christ. You, my friends, are a force to be reckoned with. So take joy in that. Take courage in that. And that knowing that the enemy is more worried about you than you are of him.
The demonic realm is more concerned about us and what we're doing than we should ever be of what their plans may be. We move forward and we take ground for the kingdom and they leave. Okay? Uh, it lets us know in our word that you, you submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. By constantly being submitted to the truth of who you are in Christ and being submitted to the truth that Jesus has done away with the power of the enemy in your life, and when you trust that and you allow him to be your defender, your vindicator, your strength, then he resists the, the enemy, the devil, for you. Any time that you put your focus on trying to fight a demon or trying to fight Satan and resist temptation and you try to do it in your own strength, it just makes things worse. It just makes it more apparent. It just makes you struggle with it even more because now you're subjecting your mind to this wrestling game. Okay, but we're supposed to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. It lets us know in the word. And one of those times when you're going to need to take those thoughts captive, it's not just when you get tempted to maybe say something negative or to hurt somebody or to to respond in an ungodly way. It's, it's not just for those times where you feel like you need to take the thought captive and not act on what what we clearly know to be sinful behavior. Okay, It's also wanting you to take the thoughts captive of putting your focus on the demonic. Satan loves your attention. He needs your attention. In order to operate and further anything within the kingdom of darkness, he needs your attention. He needs your authority. And I'm pleading with you to not give it to him. You want him to be upset and you want to feel like you're really achieving something and really giving him the old one-two, then what you need to do is put all of your focus and all of your energy into thanking God for the finished work of the cross, into thanking Jesus for the blood that he shed on Calvary, into thanking him for placing his Holy Spirit in you and making you one with him. Guys, that is the power of the gospel. That is the, that is the truth. Listen, we need to put our focus in speaking the truth, not in rejecting the lie. It's a, it's a, it's a one-step deal. When you speak the truth and focus on the truth, the light gets shed and the darkness has to leave. Okay? When, when you walk into a room and the light's off and it's dark, you don't have to command the darkness to leave before you flip the light switch. Okay? You don't have to do that. You can walk in and you simply know that by acting on the truth, the lie is done away with in that same act. So I hope this has helped you guys. I hope maybe it's given you something to think about. Uh, it's These things will really help you. They will really help you. I mean, you won't feel so discouraged. You won't feel like you're fighting and so tired and so drained. You won't feel like Satan's kingdom is so big anymore when you begin to realize that, hey, even in the understanding of a military mindset, Satan only took a third of the angels with him. Okay, that means that there's still two thirds fighting for God and on the side of Christ in his kingdom. Okay, so Satan and one third of the angels who now are, I think it's safe to say they're half as powerful as they were when they were uh, in agreement with and unity with Christ. Okay, who gave them their power to be to begin with. Okay, their power is a shadow of what it once was, and there's only a third of them. They clearly lost, they clearly fell from the sky, and you are clearly on the winning team. Don't be concerned about what they can do. One believer in Christ is more powerful than an, an entire army of demons because it only took one Jesus to conquer sin and death, and that one Jesus lives inside of you by faith, and the enemy knows this. And the more that you know this and you set your mind on this and focus on this, the more victorious of a life you will live. So guys, I'm going to leave you with that. I hope this has blessed you and edified you and built you up because that's the purpose of these videos. And so I love you guys. I bless you in Jesus' name. Take care.